Go over here. Okay, so good afternoon everyone and thank you for being here today to listen to our presentation on how to address the company's current problem as well as for our proposed solution that would have a huge impact on the company's future. So to this point, the company's main focus has been on our core competency, which is the innovation. This is because our customers are demanding more and more high quality product and our competitors are selling products at lower price. And the fact that our R&D team is coming up with something new is very important, but whether they can carry on with this project or not would depend on many factors. And the problem that we currently face is how do we get the appropriate resource for the R&D team to push this product to the market in time before our competitors do? And my team and I have come up with some framework based on information that you gave us. And we have three main criteria for um, our solution. The first criteria has to do with preserving our intellectual property. As we all know, our company has grown into a billion dollars company through innovation. And the value that our intellectual property has given us in the past and made us successful today is very important. And this, is a, this will continue in the future. So we need to make the most benefit out of this intellectual property, especially in the long term. Second criteria has to do with our brand. RLK is known <coughs> as a high-end brand that produces high-quality audio design <coughs> product. And we want to keep this because our customers, they know that this is our brand image and this is what, how, what they're going to buy when they see our brand. And the last criteria has to do with the people and the time. People has long been an important part of our culture. And these people are the same people that are going to get this product happen and do it within the deadline. So that's why now we're running out of time. And you know competitors are acting very fast in terms of getting our, um, our consumers. So if we don't do this, we're going to lose our business. To sum up my framework, um, we basically need to get high quality product into the market as soon as possible while maintaining our growth through innovation. And intellectual property, brand, and our people are what gonna help us achieve our objectives. Thank you, thank you. Well then, set you have a seat. Hero, you're up for uh, three minutes to do the overview. Okay. Thank you for coming. I know you are here to make a big decision today. Let me summarize our situation. We are the high-end audio video company. In 1990s, we are greatly successful, but now we are losing our, co our customer and facing a risk of bankruptcy. We have to change that. Now, our chief scientist, Ray, has developed a prototype of innovative headset named Ivy. It has a potential to make our history, but to complete the project, we need high-skilled embedded software engineer, and we do not have such capabilities. Now, we have to make a decision how to overcome this situation. I define our problem. We have to find a way to successfully complete the development and launch of iBit in one year, overcoming the lack of capabilities and the lack of money. Our chairman, Keith, required us to turn around in one year, so we do not have much time. I define three solution objectives. First of all, we have to be sustainable. In other words, we have to mitigate the risk of R&D failure. Ray says this is a local science project. It means super innovative, but it has high risk of failure. So we, ha we can't lose money more. We have to mitigate the risk. Second, a solution should be cost effective. 
According to the CFO's analysis, hiring top talents in the United States costs six million dollars. We do not such money. So cost effectiveness is another important point. Third, a solution should be long-term advantage in innovation. I mean, we have to think about not only short-term success, but also long-term success. If we, we obtain additional insights and additional expertise, we would be much more competitive. In conclusion, my, my part, now the time to change our company. We need a solution that is sustainable, that is price cost effective, and that is long-term advantage in innovation. Thank you. Thank you. Well then, Harry, you're up for questions. By one person. Okay. So, Per, you mentioned that a core competency is innovation. Uh, are you guys actually concerned that you're stifling innovation, one of your core values, by not looking outside of the box um, and other options for rounding out this item? Okay, um, yeah, I understand that innovation has been our core competency, and you might think that, okay, do we need to look outside or elsewhere for innovation? But since our company's position is to be high-end U.S. company, and that's what our customer wants. Our innovation is there within Ray's team. He has built this company from the ground up, and the innovation has been proven to be successful so far. And right now, with this new technology that he has, it's a breakthrough innovation that customer wants. So I um, really, really, really believe in his team and um, the people that he will bring in to create further innovation that would help satisfy the demand in the U.S. market. Okay. Any questions? No. <laughs> okay. um, um, so, are you um, so? Can you justify expanding your, you guys mentioned you're gonna um, expand your R&D in-house. Can you justify that decision by um, knowing that your competitors are downsizing that and outsourcing their R&D? Um, so the question is, can, sorry, can you repeat the question? I'm just curious, you, you mentioned you, you wanted to keep the innovation within uh -huh. your own firm. You don't want to. Yeah send it elsewhere, mm -hmm. and I was just, con I, was, well, I wanted to know your opinion about your competitors are not doing that. Most people are, are outsourcing and they're, they're keeping their costs low by outsourcing, and I was just wondering how you, keep, you are aiming to keep okay. competitive when everyone else is doing the yeah. opposite of what you're gonna do. So, while everyone else is downsizing and outsourcing, why do we decide to keep this in? Well, because, well, one reason is because of everyone else is doing it, we need to maintain our like differentiation like factor to position ourselves and just stick to our loyal customers so that um, we still have this part of the unmet demand in, in this market. Thank you. Thank you. Hero, up for questions. Yep. Hero, you spoke of sustainability, but outsourcing can actually add a lot of risk. How do you? How will you ensure that the short-term solution, like outsourcing, is actually sustainable long-term? Uh, I do not say uh, outsource about and uh, in-house. And uh, I just say long-term success is very important. And as you said, short-term success is also important for us. That's, that's why I said cost effectiveness is very important and the uh, second tier of our solution objectives. So we have to achieve our goal to launch IVID in one year with cost effectiveness. That's, that's our understanding of how and what we can do it. Um, 
RLK has a very strong American brand. Uh, how will you de deal with brand dilution that accompany any cost effective measure that you take? That's a good point. Sometimes cost effectiveness and brand has a trade off, but I don't think uh, achieving our goal to launch a product in cost effectiveness lose our brand. We can achieve both. That's why I said in the third solution objectives, we have to have a solution to be a, a long-term advantage in innovation. We have to think about to keep innovative. Um, <coughs> RLK is a direct function of the intellectual property that is developed within it. Um, you mentioned sustainability, cost-effectiveness, and a long-term innovation advantage as part of your um, framework. Mm -hmm. What about IP? Uh, IP would be a part of the long-term success. So, yeah, IP is uh, one of the parts we have to be consider. We have to consider. What isn't it very risky to send your ideas abroad? Uh, now we cannot define the 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 percentage or possibility of the risk of IP. So now we have to achieve the goal to win and uh, compete the uh, competitor in one year. So that's why the first goal is, uh, oh, as I said, uh, cost effectiveness is a uh, good uh, social objectives and uh, sustainability is also our social objectives. Time. Thank you. Okay, let's go round, round two. Uh, Matt, you're up. All right, hello everyone. Let me build off of Perry's points and we rephrase the issues here. So we mentioned that we need to build IP, we need to build our brand, and we need to act with urgency and with the right people. And by doing so, I feel like we can maintain growth for over the long term. I think that outsourcing is a myopic view of a way to cut costs early and quickly, and it'll start, it solves a problem now without looking in the long term. So what are we gonna do over the long term? So we're gonna protect our IP, our brand, and our people by focusing on in-house work. <coughs> so first, the IP. Innovation is our core competency. We need to protect it, we need to grow it. We don't want to fund other companies' R&D by losing that, R and that, I that IP to other <coughs> companies. Uh, also, this, co this decision that we're making is a make it or break it situation. We are going for broke. If we're gonna go for broke, we need to do the best of the best and, and blow this out of the water. We're gonna, we know who we want, we have all American superstars. We're gonna bring those people in, Let's, let's get the best if you want the best. And lastly, in, in the IP realm, is let's not be Pico, Picosonics. We don't want to get involved with a company that may or may not work out in the long term, that might delay our start time, they might delay us in terms of negotiation, and they might delay us in terms of lost time and lost IP. Second point that Pear mentioned was brand. So we want to maintain our brand. Brand to us is everything. We don't want to be a mediocre company. We want to differentiate ourselves with the best quality, the best products, and we want to get to market first. We don't want to let our loyal customers sway from us because we have diluted our own brand. We feel that by staying local, maintaining our American manufacturing brand, our loyal customers will be our best marketers when we do come out with this new <coughs> They'll be the ones on the ground supporting our work, supporting our premium, and really driving home the new technolo technological advances that we have. And also with brand, is that we want to maintain our own internal brand. We have a very strong R&D culture. We don't want to alienate Ray, we don't want to alienate our R&D team, we don't want to dilute all of the energetic creativity in our R&D team that has taken years to develop. We have a great, great functional group that has productive uh, friction, and we don't want to send them away demoralized, or worse, we don't want Ray to take them to another company saying, you know, you do your thing, clearly we're not welcome here anymore, we'll go do our own company. And lastly is, is time and people. We need to get this done now, not later. We don't have time to go to India to negotiate. We don't have time to, to cover ourselves with the necessary contracts. 
we need a solution now. And we have that, we have that solution now. Ray, who's, who's very well known in the industry, knows what he's doing, knows who he needs and what he needs to get this done. They come at a premium, but we make premium products. And that's what it costs. And we want to, we want to be the best, we want to differentiate ourselves because we are the best. We want the right people. We don't want to just cast the net out there, see what we get, and hope that one of those people is, has the idea. We know who we want to target, we're ready to go, we need to get going on this now. And lastly, now is not the time to experiment with outsourcing. We can blow this out of the water, get our feet back underneath us, and then we can experiment with cutting our costs going overseas with outsourcing. But now is not the time for that. So we, we feel that this option, keeping in-house, is a long-term solution. The short-term solution, the myopic solution, is the fast, cheap situation of going overseas now. We don't feel that that will support long-term growth in RLK. Thank you, Matt. Um, so, uh, in Matt's got his time. Enrico, when you're ready, you can go ahead and go. Three minutes, great. Good afternoon, members of the board, fellow consultants. We are here today to make a very important decision. We have to choose between outsourcing our R&D or keeping it in-house. We favor outsourcing our R&D mainly because of two reasons. The first one is risk-related. We feel that uh, outsourcing is the only option that gives us a tolerable uh, risk rate. Consider this, developing a new product it's something really, really risky. Therefore, if you choose to allow management to uh, keep our R&D function inside the company, you may bank bankrupt this company. Uh, developing uh, developing a, a product, uh, outsourcing, is the only option that gives us another chance if we miss this one. The second reason that uh, I want you to consider is this. <clears throat> R&D is the only option that gives us access to talent at a low cost, at a cost effective way, in a cost effective way. Uh, by, by, by allowing this company to outsource its R&D department, you allow that we access Foreign, foreign PhDs, uh, companies that have really good lab, labs and that have experience in, across industries to help us develop our products. Our, all our competitors are doing this. So if we don't master this weapon, we may lose this war. So as members of the board, you should not allow management to take a very, very risky, uh, the, the very, very risky option of developing up the product, uh, the, the developing IVID in-house, because it may bankrupt the company, and it should allow us to outsource R&D, because that's the only way for us to achieve a cost-effective, long-term uh, idea generation uh, rate. Thank you. Thank you. Matt, up for questions. Um, so, so given that the team is very self-selected and the new members are being handpicked by leadership, are you how, how are you planning to address the lack of cognitive <coughs> diversity that's inevitable to ensue? So the lack of cognitive diversity will be overcome by the, the passion and energy that this new team builds. By bringing in the new and the, and the best people out there, our own team will be energized, they'll think in different ways in terms of these new people who have a lot of experience, and they'll work together in, in the same way that we, they, they have been doing. They'll be there all, all hours of all, all night. They'll try out different ways of, of doing things. Uh, these new people will have new contacts that we can contact them. We'll have our own internal network. We can bring in other ideas from, from these other superstars. Uh, and it's just maintaining that flow of creative energy rather than demoralizing the team, which will then filter into India because we need to bring our people to India to teach them what we're doing. That, that demoralized sense will be filtered over there and I don't think that we'll be able to uh, meet our deadline of one year should that happen. Thank you. Um, you mentioned in your speech that um, you wanted to cut costs early by doing 
um, by keeping R&D in-house. But oftentimes, product launches are very unsuccessful. So what is your contingency plan um, based on giving a $6 million investment and the product doesn't succeed? What, what is the contingency plan if that happens? So cut cost early. You, you mentioned you wanted to cut cost early, but this is actually more of an expensive uh, endeavor so, than outsourcing. So outsourcing, I think, was stated as the fast, cheap option, mm -hmm. whereas insourcing was to bring in people at a premium at to a make premium. A, to make a premium product. Right. So I guess we, we would be the opposite of, of cutting costs. We would be finding money to fund a premium product to get on the market first. And if we're the first ones on the market with no competition, then we are we will be the ones that will they'll have to buy us. There's no one else out there. And then once people come up to speed. We'll already have started developing the next product to be the first on the market to get revenue that way. Okay. All right. So you also mentioned that you didn't want to <laughs> cast. You said you didn't want to cast a wide net to find talent to develop your product, but Lars has already gone over to India and identified a very uh, well-respected <coughs> firm and company that can do, that can produce um, what we're looking for. So when you say cast a wide net, what what were you referring to and and We've already done a lot of the research there, so that's not necessarily where we would be. A, a wide net would be having to relook in an entire sort of search of a firm. We've already found one and identified one that can do what we want exactly what we, how we need it. So the wide net referred to within the firm, and that the firm, one of their claims to fame is that they have 100 elite engineers, and casting a net within those 100 elite engineers, hopefully we can pick off one. I guess where we come in with the, with our questioning is. Do any one of those 100 elite engineers have the motivation to work as hard as any one of our 10 new people that are coming in, or as hard as you know, our, our team that's already there? So you know, we could say maybe one of them will, will fall upon it with cognitive diversity, or we can grow our team, we can increase the morale within our own group, uh, and find a kind of you know power through problem rather than just hope that that in the population sample we'll find it. The company. Enrico, you mentioned that we would be copying our competitors by going abroad. Um, RLK differentiates on their product. If we're going abroad, why shouldn't our customers do the same thing and cut corners on the, per the products that they're buying? Uh, the customers don't... Uh, American customers are actually very used to companies that uh, outsource part of their R&D. Uh, <coughs> Apple, for example, and other companies, uh, successful companies, do, do it. And I don't feel, we don't feel that by outsourcing a, a small part of our R&D, we would lose our identity and uh, our customer base. It's a tendency, and, and, and it actually, if we don't do it, uh, it could really hurt our company because it would. Uh, Cut down us on uh, on us on access to uh, important ideas that our competitors are are looking at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you spoke a great deal about risk, but the biggest risk is that the product flops. What contingencies contingencies do you have in place to ensure that that doesn't happen? Exactly. So the the, the biggest thank you for the question. The the biggest uh, the biggest. Uh, Risk that we have is that the product product isn't isn't, isn't successful, and with the outsourcing op option, it doesn't bankrupt the company. We have we can have contingency plans. The thing is that uh, if we choose to keep it, uh, it uh, to to do it using our internal R and D, we won't have money to have a contingency plan. So uh, our, with with, uh, with R and D uh, uh, with outsourcing R and D. We can generate the, 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 the other continuous plans. We can use the, 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 the outsourced force uh, to look up to other products that uh, are, are being developed inside our companies. What wouldn't happen with the other option? Okay. Yeah, um, you spoke about uh, risk and you have never outsourced before. So, what do you think, that, what makes you confident that outsourcing R&D will make your product successful? Uh, Inova is actually very used to helping companies uh, across the globe to develop products. 
they have expertise on that and, and they have expertise in, in uh, having their teams work with several other companies. Therefore, I'm confident that by using their services, we can generate the kind of knowledge that we need to develop this product. Time. Time. Thank you, Enrico. Now we're going to, uh, we'll, we'll flip that. So Frank, you get to come up first. And then Nate, you get to bring, bring it in. John, I was mentally ready. <laughs> oh, I'm just doing it up. <laughs> uh, expect the unexpected. I know. Uh, go, ahead, go ahead, Frank. Hello everybody, thank you for coming today for this uh, board meeting about if we should outsource or insource our R&D products. We've, had, we've heard excellent debates on both sides in regards to uh, if we should do this or not. We maintain our position that we should outsource and for, for some few key reasons, but I want to address a couple themes that I've been seeing in regards to the questions. First being brand dilution. We understand and we respect our brand. We want to have the best brand we can. But we honestly feel that by outsourcing, we're going to create a superior product at a cheaper price. And that's what our customers want. So we're in fact strengthening our brand by outsourcing. The second thing is IP risk. We understand that IP risk is critical. We need to quantify, we need to measure, we need to protect and mitigate. And we feel that with our legal resources, we'll be able to mitigate that by lessons learned of prior companies that's worked with outsourcing companies. Let me touch on the objectives that Hero excellently presented earlier. We're trying to have a cost-effective solution for our product. And second, we want a long-term strategy that's going to be sustainable and keep us in business for the long run. As Enrico pointed, we're facing huge risks. We will be bankrupt if this does not work. And that's why we are fighting for this outsourcing piece. And then second, we want access to top talent. Innovation is a fluid, it's a, it's a blood that keeps companies alive, and that's why companies are going to be successful. And we need to be a market leader. And we're not right now. That's the key thing. We're not. So we want to, and so in closing, we're, all chips are in. We need to do this now. We need to outsource, and we need to be successful. So thank you. Thank you. Now, Nate. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Enrico made an interesting point about risk. Each option in this instance contains an element of risk. There's no denying that. The fact of the matter is, is that with outsourcing, there is a greater amount of risk with a lower, uh, lower rate of return in the long run. The reason for that is the unknown. With both options, the key assumption is that Ray and his team will work well, whether it's with a new team coming from uh, people in the US or whether it's with Inova. The fact of the matter is, is that Ray is not excited about working uh, with an outsourcing team, and creating productive friction with, uh, with Inova is unknown and uncertain. We're, we are not confident that Ray will be able to uh, work well with Inova to ultimately create a successful product in a timely fashion. I want to circle back to a few of our, our key principles in IP, brand, uh, and people. So this is, this is really about IP. Uh, we want to maintain our IP and make, maintain control of it. So with that in mind, just because we have a contract with Inova does not completely protect us from losing our IP. Uh, which is a key element. Secondly, with our brand. Our brand is, it has two components, one internal and one is external. Internally, our employees expect to do work here in the U.S. They're not used to working with the third party, and that's very important to them. If they do that, they may leave. Externally, our customers expect our products to be produced here in the U.S. at a, at a high rate and high quality. If we, go to, if we go to India, that can impact both our stakeholders internally and our stakeholders externally. And finally, I think this is the most important element, is our people. I said before, this, this, this assumption is on Ray and his team, whether it's with Inova or bringing uh, people here in the US. We have to, be, have, we have to bet on Ray. Uh, Ray is saying that we should not go the outsourcing route. He can do this on his own. Uh, as I said, this is a make or break moment in the company's history. I'd rather make a bet on our own internal person uh, than go with someone that we've just met with an unknown uh, solution, an un unknown situation, with people that we have not worked with. So in the end, we're confident in Ray and his ability to, to lead our company forward with the new external team. Thank you. Thank you. Frank, up for questions. Sure. As Nate so brilliantly alluded, uh, <laughs> Ray is clearly a big part of the company. 
how do you intend to get him on board with the outsourcing strategy? And if you don't get him on board, how will you deal with the repercussions? Excellent question. We do value Ray's opinion and expertise in our company, and we will make sure that we do everything to satisfy his needs and to make sure that he's a part of the process. That may include having him and his team be on location in India, vetting the companies that we are potentially using to outsource, as well as having directional in, uh, influence in terms of the way the software development is being processed. The thing you have to remember is that the company is bigger than one person. And we respect Ray and we want him to maintain, to still be a part of the company. But if we want to move forward, we're facing tremendous risk, as Enrico pointed out. We will be bankrupt if we don't succeed. And success equals outsourcing. Um, Frank, you passionately stated earlier that innovation is a company's lifeblood. I agree. Why would you go ahead and outsource it? Excellent question, now. Uh, outsourcing. Outsourcing is an option or the key for innovative ideas simply because those people who outsource uh, or the companies that provide that service touch on multiple different companies. They work with uh, uh, Sony, they work with IBM, they work with various companies. And by working with those different companies, they get to see what works, what doesn't work. What works, what doesn't work. Okay. If we were to figure out things on our own, it would take us 100 years to capture the knowledge that they've captured in simply working with five or six clients. That's the benefit. We're not trying to steal IP, we're not trying to steal ideas, but we want their best practices. That's gonna save us time and save us costs. And that's why we're trying to outsource. Uh, if the plan with Innova doesn't work out, what, what backup plan do you have? Excellent question. Either A, we would try to seek another firm to mitigate the risk. Um, but you have to realize, we're, doing, we're working with Innova at a fraction of the cost. So as Enrico, once again, going back to his original point, failure with Innovo doesn't equal fair for the company. Okay, We still have options in terms of either exploring different partners, either a joint venture. We can explore different ways. But at least by betting on outsourcing, we're not going to dismantle the company if it doesn't work out. Thank you, Frank. Uh, Nate. So, um, heard a lot about IP, brand, people in time, I understand that. Uh, the last point, you talked about people. So is it not short-sighted to think that Innova could possibly be the next potential best partnership for RLK? Who's to say that they couldn't be the right people for the job? Is it not short-sighted? Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think for this particular situation, uh, it is, it's in the company's best interest to focus internally. I think uh, Matt hit it best when he said it's a myopic, quick decision. So in terms of looking externally, this seems as if we're, we're at a very, we're at a tipping point or a breaking point of the company. And so we're trying to find out a new solution. Uh, we're seeing a lot of companies do outsourcing, so, oh, so why don't we jump on board? Just because other companies are doing it successfully does not necessarily mean that we will be successful in doing it, in doing so. Uh, so again, I, I mentioned this earlier with Ray, we trust Ray's judgment, and we we'll make sure that he's happy and that he's confident in his solution, and so that's why we don't think it's short-sighted in going with Ray for now, because that's what we do know, and that's what we're confident in. Okay. Um, so you said, so it, it's been proven, past experiences uh, has shown that our, the team does not move particularly fast at a, at a fast pace. Uh, what do you guys want to do to ensure that um, you're more efficient in order to meet this 12-month deadline by bringing in uh, the, the two candidates that are from from the recruitment per, like side of it. Yeah, so I don't think it's necessarily something that we're going to do. I think that's the responsibility of Lars, ultimately. Mm -hmm. So the buck stops with him. He's going to be on, on the hook for the timelines, and he's going to be responsible, and then ultimately Ray and then his team. So I think in terms of changing the status quo, bringing in a new set of engineers that have a different experience will definitely help uh, bridge that. But at the end of the day, with leadership and management, they're going to have to be responsible for that timeline. Uh, I do think bringing in new people will help with the way that they have performed in the past uh, because it'll bring in new energy and uh, a sense of urgency for what they have to do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh, let's give both teams a round of applause.
Uh, and we'll go to the audience for feedback first, then we'll hear from our TAs and we'll wrap up. Uh, who'd like to start? Uh, I guess I can start. We, we just address everybody? Or? Uh, yeah, as many as you want, whatever you want to offer. You want to go first, Andrew, or going to? I can go first. I think you guys all did a great job. Uh, you guys all seem very prepared. Um, Kira, you, are, you have a great intonation in your voice. And you were really exciting. Frank, I think you did a great job of, you know, answering all the questions. And you also had high intensity, and, and, and Matt as well, uh, you know, kind of a rock solid figure guy there. Um, so I think everything, everyone is really good. I, you know, the only some feedback. Um, Pair, I think you had great responses, and sometimes I felt like you're a little maybe not confident. Be confident. You have great responses, and they're the right answers. So, um, you know, other than that, though, I thought I thought you did a great job as well, Pair, and, and gave a great background on the company and, and started your group off to a good start. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, kind of building on what Andrew said, I thought everyone did a great job. Uh, everyone really knew their stuff. Um, looking at some individual. Um, performances. Um, pair kind of what Andrew was saying, like, I, I thought you did a really good job responding, but you looked kind of, I don't know if you had notes in front of you, and it kind of looked like you were looking at them, but you weren't using them at all. You just looked down, and but you weren't pulling any information from the notes, and so it could have been, your presentation could have been that much more forceful if you would just continue to look at the, um, at Manga. Uh, you guys, I, both, both of you guys, great gestures. Um, you guys definitely weren't Stoic, you were moving around. It was, you know, very Im impactful. Um, and same, Frank. I thought you did a really good job responding to the questions. Uh, you got a couple of curveballs. I felt like or, or a curveball, and <laughs> you did a good job answering it pretty directly and bringing it back to to your key point. So. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Lizzie, let's come up and let's go down the road. Be back. Sure. Um, to echo what Jeff was saying, I think. Frank, you were you gave really thoughtful responses. You did a, a great job of summarizing every all of your responses and getting to the bottom line of what the team was was arguing for. So I thought that was great. Um, Enrico, you were really confident up there, um, and you know did a good job fielding questions. Only thing I would focus on a little bit would be maybe structuring your responses a little bit more because sometimes they got a little circular. Um, Hero, you up there, you really like show excitement and you get the, the crowd involved, which is great. Um, let's see, Pear, um, I agree you had really great responses, but seemed a little hesitant, so you just practice through that or work through that, and then um, that'll be really helpful. Matt, great presence, um, great job arguing. Every time you say anything, I'm like 100% convinced you're right, so that's good. <laughs> and Nate, you did a really good job of bringing everyone together and bringing, summing up the whole team and um, leaving them on a good note. Good Yeah, so I think both teams, the presentation were very prepared and also every person showed very good confidence and good eye contact and gesture. But specifically today, I think the hero's presentation is very impressive. So you are very confident. And also you, I, I, I believe you prepare so a lot, yeah. And also, uh, Frank, I like your answer for every question. So you show <coughs> very good confidence. Yeah, good job. Good job. Yeah. Again, great job, everyone. Frank, I thought you were just really passionate. Like I was getting excited listening to you and, and just thought that guy knows what he's talking about. Even when you were responding to the questions, you were just really passionate about what you were saying. Uh, you had good eye contact. And I thought your structure was good because when you started out, you, you linked your points back to what the previous speakers had said, which was good. One thing for improvement and I got call, called out on this was, you don't have to say excellent question yeah. to every single person that asks a question. <laughs> but that, was, <laughs> that was just, that was, that was the only thing. Otherwise, awesome job. Enrico, I thought you were really confident when you were answering questions. You were just very firm. You had good answers. You just looked confident while you were up there answering the questions. Um, I had a little trouble following your speech, and maybe this was just me, I just didn't, don't feel like you've linked it 
to what the previous speaker had said as well as, as I thought maybe um, you could have. Um, but you had some you had some nice sticky points like if we don't use this weapon we lose the war. I really like that. Um, again, overall great job. And then Hero, like everybody said, I think you did really well. You had a lot of passion and energy as well. You enumerated the issues. You, you made the priorities clear. It was easy to follow what you were saying. One thing to note, and again, I do it all the time, is just saying ah uh, when you're thinking. So if you just cut down on that, you're perfect. Thank you. John? Yeah, so you guys are already covered. Yeah, I that's one word. You did a great job. And <laughs> See, it's rough when you're at the very last. It's just uh, Matthew, we'll do you and then Christian. Uh, sure, yeah. So as I told the, the group in the first hour, I think you guys have really improved a lot in the last two weeks since I saw you guys do the company presentations. Um, I focused my feedback on Group A and Christian focused on Group, group B. Um, in terms of Group A, so pair... I thought your, your main points were very clear, like brand image, that was very, very clear. And the structure, the three main criteria, it's always helpful, like you did, for the audience to have a clear roadmap for where you're, you're going, so that was good. I would, again, have a clear <coughs> end, know when you're going to end, have your, your end sentence, and then, and then just finish. Don't look around kind of questioningly, like asking the audience if you're done. Um, delivery. I would recommend really locking your eyes, um, in, and this is kind of a global question, or global uh, feedback, lock your eyes uh, for one to two seconds per person in the audience and then move. Uh, sometimes people were kind of darting the eyes today between people. Um, one thing that I do if I want to buy time, uh, if I don't know an answer right away, is I will, I'll just, like you did after a, few, uh, after a little bit, just ask them to restate the question. I think that's really... Um, that's really helpful. That'll give you five seconds to <coughs> more to think to formulate your answer. Um, but yeah, overall, overall, good job, um, Matt G. I liked your logical, very coherent arguments. Uh, very effective. I w and I like that you tied your introduction into some of Pear's statements. I would slow down a little bit. Um, it wasn't fast. It was just it was a little bit faster than optimum. I'd say. And again, your eyes were darting a little bit around the room. So just you know, one or two seconds, and then next person, one or two seconds. Uh, and then the last thing, just really show your enthusiasm uh, and vocal var variation. Uh, I think a little bit of monotone for part of the present presentation, but uh, very clear and effective. And then uh, last, uh, Nate. Um, again, very well organized, good job. Uh, in terms of the arm movements, I would, Move, be a little more forceful, move the arm. Sometimes you were kind of in the T-Rex zone, you know, right here. Uh, really really move those arms and be, be assertive with them. Uh, I really liked your confident, natural speaking voice. It was very conversational, but also professional, so I really liked that. Um, and again, don't, don't rock back and forth. Um, you know, stay still and then take, you know, strong, uh, confident steps, say, towards the audience. So one, one thing I told the people in the morning is that people, just all, all of us kind of have a tendency to just stay still or rock back and forth, but if you can really break the wall with the audience and, you know, almost be, be very close to where they are, you become part of the audience. So I think that's very powerful. Uh, but great job, guys. Thank you. Christian. Uh, so I'm going to talk mostly to Team B, but just very, really quickly, if I could only pick one thing to make you more confident, just lift your chin. If you did that and nothing else, I think that would dramatically improve your confidence. So. Just, just hopefully that helps a little bit. Uh, so two general things first. Uh, one is, is just a tip for some of these questions. When you take a question, you can own a question. And if you want to think of it in a bad way, you can twist the question as well. And uh, that really makes the question yours instead of the question asker. Ask whatever that word should be. Uh, and that could just be another tip. Kind of reframe the question. Reframe it. Make, make yeah. it. make it your ally instead of an enemy. Uh, and then the other thing is, I hear a lot of I feel and I think in here. So just overall, those are relatively weak. They're sometimes appropriate, but, but you could come back with something more like we're confident or just lay out the facts anyways. Uh, so those are just two, two general tips. So first, uh, Hero, 
Uh, overall, I loved where you were vocally in terms of volume and your pacing. It didn't feel too rushed. I felt relaxed and into it as well. Um, your hand gestures were also good. Um, there were perhaps a little too many at times, but overall they were relatively in a good zone. They were expressive enough, but without being wild and flinging all over the place. So overall, I really liked that. Um, we'll hear this time and time again throughout the two terms. Uh, pausing at good moments really helps things. And, and, and to be specific about that, I really would have liked to pause right after it's going to cost six million dollars. And if you let that fact sit on me, that's going to weigh on me. And then the other time is also in the uh, enumeration of points. Pause between those enumeration of points and let them sink in and, and they'll just be a lot more effective. Uh, overall, uh, really good job. You did a good job with the, the Q&A as well. Uh, Enrico, uh, you had a very comfortable voice as well. I could hear you no problem. So overall, your, your vocals were, were pretty good in terms of quality. Uh, I wasn't sure where your eyes were going. I, I think you were staring straight at this plate or something at times. And, and I could be wrong, um, but just lock into people. Though. There's something very powerful about locking into people. And uh, if you're going to stare anywhere, stare in the middle of people. <laughs> and you can at least fake us out or, or psych us out. Uh, you sometimes also struggle with uh, fillers. Uh, don't be afraid of silence. Uh, don't don't fill it with just ums or uh, uh, silence is, is no problem at all. Um, you had good enumeration in, in your your phrases as well. I uh, I also like how you utilize some of the questions during the Q and A to really come back to your points. I think that was a strong suit that you had. Uh, you didn't just answer a question. You answered a question and supported your argument as well. Uh, so overall, uh, pretty good job. Uh, Frank, I, I would echo a lot of the other comments that were there, but let me tell me why. <laughs> let me tell you why you were looked com confident up there. You stepped up and you kept the vocals at a very appropriate range as well. I think that if you had just started in the front, that would have been very strong. But moving to the front is also very impactful. It, it says I'm ready to engage you. So I really like that. Don't don't overdo that, but <laughs> I, I really like that part as well. Um, the one, and this was a small misstep, but I think it really affected me. Uh, you misdirected me right in the middle. You said, I'm going to talk about this, but let me get to that later. Yeah. Uh, and that misdirect really just throws my train of thought off and, uh, and could be an issue. So it's a really small thing overall, but it's also uh, impactful perhaps on the negative side. Uh, but back to the positive. In closing, I like that roadmap, and you gave me a, a strong statement there at the end. Uh, I'll echo again, excellent question, because if you ever leave that out, uh, then someone's going to be like, what, my question wasn't good enough for you? <laughs> and you could have all sorts of issues there. And uh, you're also good in your Q&A about, again, relating it to what you're trying to get across. Uh, overall, uh, I think Team A had a little bit more of a team cohesion in terms of bringing back some similar elements. You guys had it as well, it just wasn't quite as evident to me. So maybe working on, on really getting a theme to go across would be effective. But overall, great job on both ends, both teams. First of all, in terms of the content and structure, I thought you guys did a great job uh, there. With better frameworks than we've been having around the day. Uh, let me just highlight a few things quickly. Most of the things have already been said by the audience and our TAs. Uh, Pear, I'll start with your team. I thought you did a really good job today. I thought on the structure you gave a good overview. The problem was defined, which is exactly what you were to do, was the problem and the criteria. And so I just could check that out. You know, how do we get our resources to get the product to market quickly? It's a good, succinct statement. The three criteria, preserve IP, brand, and people, was clear to me. And, and a transition, you could have expanded to close, but to sum up. So for me, structurally, organizationally, that was spot on. Uh, and I continue to see you grow. Uh, again, what's going to happen for all of us is when we go to Q&A, that's when the habits leak out and, and you lost the eye contact, it got a little weaker. So keep the same energy that, that you had from the front there. And then you transitioned into Matt and again, I like right away that you link back the pair, which is going to be very important as we move forward in the term with six person teams presenting at a time. So you link that, you went back, you renamed the three criteria. Then you got in and one of the themes I like 
words that stick, you know, myopic. We got to be more far-sighted and, and there, and then you did some good inoculation. Um, the one thing I like your confident style, but I think one thing too is maybe you're picking up is a little more vocal variety, just just to get some variation in there. Um, I think that would add more impact. Nate, again, good good close. You started by refuting some of the points, and you brought up that big issue about Ray not comfortable. And then I like the fact that you came back. Let me circle back, which is a good transition phase. Let me circle back, and you went back to IP brand and people. And then you close that make or break. Uh, the one thing that I would just say is, is, is get more comfortable, again, non-verbally. You're going to watch as you were rocking more than I wanted to on that. But uh, as a team, very cohesive. Good job. Uh, hero. I love your energy. I, like, I have watched you grow since LI, and, and it's, you, it's just really good. Uh, you did a good summary, uh, and I like, again, the theme about risk of bankruptcy, which is one of the things that we talked about. You defined the problem. You laid out the three objectives, very clear, sustainable, cost-effective, again, long-term innovation success. So, so very clear. Again, perhaps a little tone it down a little bit, some of the animation, but I, I really like the energy. Uh, Enrico, good analysis. The one thing, and I like when you went into, I'm going to have two reasons. Yeah, the only thing that I had there about toler tolerable risk rate and the cost effective, just try to link it more to what Hero is saying as our conceptual framework. I, I think that would be the, the one thing there. And under your responses, I really like when you go, we got to have a solution that does not bankrupt us. So we're keeping that theme in there that we're, we're going. Just be aware of your hands. You, you're doing a lot of one-handed gestures, and when you're sitting there waiting for the questions, you're washing and wringing. Small things, easier to do. Frank, you're best by far. You're best by far. I was really impressed with that. Uh, very confident, very credible. Uh, again, you went back good refuting, you know, you respect the brand, but, and then you get into the points. And I even like that last theme, because I'm big about themes and making points sticky. All the chips are in. You know, we, we got all the chips in. And that was the kind of thing that I would say. Just, as Dari mentioned, when you get in Q&A, for all of us, I'm going to say, remember, share eye contact. Don't just lock into one person. Not every time, excellent, you know that. Um, Great job this afternoon. Let's give them a round of applause.